Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. The GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we will solve some multiple choice problems that you will find on page number 90. Let's turn to it. Make sure the book is in front of you. Page number 90, the very first problem, number 90, on page number, or rather page number 76. On page number 76, turn to page number 76. The very first problem that you see there, number 90, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. It's a very simple, very straightforward question. They just, have, they just want us to solve this equation for R. So let's do that. Let's multiply this entire equation by P, if you multiply the entire equation by P, this P is going to become P squared minus 1 minus P squared equals R. That's all there is. And therefore R equals P squared plus P squared will be 2P squared minus 1. And that's all it is. 2P squared minus 1, that's all it is. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and if you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, for the math part, you can reach me at Kashwani Prep at iCloud.com. Let's do number 91. Number 91. Number 91 says that uh, the range of 4, 3, 14, 7, 10 and x is 12. The range of this series is 12. Before we do any work, let's, let's arrange them. So we have 3, 4, 7, 10 and 14 and then the question is x, where does x go? We'll, we'll have to figure it out. The question is very straightforward. The question is what's the difference? What's the difference between the greatest possible value of x and the least possible value of x and that's all they're looking for that's all they're looking for so it says what's the difference between the greatest possible value of x and the least possible value of x as you can clearly see x has to be as you see this is the smallest number 3 this is 14 this is the largest one the difference between 14 and 3 is only 11 it's only 11 but we are told that the range is 12 which means this x has to be at the extreme one or the other and that's all it is one is already there one is already there this is one possibility where x is sitting here if x is sitting here since the range is 12 if this is 3 x would have to be 15 so greatest possible value is this the smallest possible value would be where x happens to be sitting at the other end and that's all it is if x is sitting at the other end, again because the range is 12, this is 14, 14 minus 2 will give us 12, so the smallest possible value is 2, and they're looking for the difference. The difference is 13. And that's all it is. There's nothing to it. The difference is 13 between the least possible, between the greatest possible value of x and the smallest possible value of x, given the fact that the range is 12. Number 92. Number 92. Number 92 says, what number, what number is 108 more than two-third of itself? What number is 108 more than two-third of itself? Let's set it up. What number, which is x, is 100 and more, more, 108 more than two third of itself, and that's all it is. That's a simple equation. That's what we have to solve for, and that's 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 all there is. Let's multiply this entire equation by three, so we can get rid of this three. If we multiply the entire equation by three, we'll end up here three x, and here we'll end up with three times 108. Don't worry about what that is right now. Don't waste your time right now. Just leave it like that. And here we have two x. 3x minus 2x is going to give us our x, and x equals, is that it? That's all. 
3 times 108. The answer is x equals 3 times 108. 3 times 108 would be 324. And that makes perfect sense because it's 3 times this. Which means since 108 is 2 third, we're looking for something that is 108 more than 2 third of itself. 2 third, 1 third of three, this number is 108. That's this guy and this, that's the remaining 2 third. There you go. So this number that we're looking for is two-thirds of itself and a one-third of itself. You see, two-third, two-third and one-third will give us the number. Number 93. It says that we're going to pay three dollars for first 50 hours. We have, we have some sort of a calling plan. I'm not going to read the entire bloody thing to you. You have to have the book in front of you so you can read the whole thing yourself. It's a very long question, but that's, this is the gist of it. A service provider is charging $50 for, for the service for the, first, for the first 50 hours. After that, we are told that we're going to pay 30 cent, 40 cents rather for each additional 30 minutes. Pay attention for each additional 30 minutes. Before you do any work at all, let's just convert, because they are talking about hours here, let's convert this to hours for each additional hour. Because they tell you for 30 cents, or for 30, for each additional 30 minutes, which is annoying. We are further told that, that uh, x, x is an integer, and x is more than 50. x has to be a whole number, and it's more than 50. question is, how much are we going to pay? How much are we going to pay for this service, for the X hours of usage? Very simple. For the first 50 hours, we're going to pay for the first 50 hours, we're going to pay C dollars for the first 50 hours. Having, having paid for the first 50 hours, since we used X hours, since we used X hours of service and X is more than 50, what is left over is X minus 50. We use, up X, we use X hours, we already paid for 50 hours here. This C represents the charge for $50. This is how many hours are left. And we're paying 80 cents. And that's all it is. I don't know if they leave the answer like this or they do something with it. And that's all it is. The answer is answer is D. Answer is D. That's all there was. Number 94. Number 94. Let me change this marker. It says that the speed was reduced from 100 from 100 kilometers per hour from 100 kilometers per hour to 47 kilometers per hour. Which means that we are down by, we are down by 53 kilometers per hour. We have reduced our speed by 53 kilometers per hour. The question is very straightforward. The question simply is, what does this, what does this translate into miles per hour? How many miles per hour? That's all they're looking for. You have to convert this thing into miles per hour. That's all it is. Very simple, very straightforward. Because this unit is the same, hour per hour. So we simply have to convert kilometers into miles. How many, how many miles per hour? As you can see, this unit is the same. So we simply have to convert 53 kilometers into 53 miles, and they tell you the conversion rate. They tell you in the problem, number 94, let me see how they put it. They tell you that one kilometer, one kilometer is equal to 0.625 six to five miles. Let's see what we can do. Okay, here we go. Let's do it from the top. So we're going to convert, we're going to use this thing, and we're going to do it from the top, so we have the room here, 53 kilometers into miles. So here's our miles, here's our kilometer, and we know 0.625 equals one kilometer. So the question is how many miles if we had 53 kilometers. That is what we have to solve for. Very simple, very straightforward. 
let's see what we can do, shall we? So x equals to, x will simply equal to this, this quantity times this quantity, 0.625, 0.625, into 53 into 53 instead of writing 0 0.625 let's write this as 625 over 1000 it will make our life easier are you with me so far? yes let's begin this story then I hope you know your perfect square I hope you know your perfect square I hope you know what 25 square is 25 square is 625 let's divide top and bottom by 25 so 625 has 25, 25, 100 has 425, and 0 has no 25. In other words, 1000 is made up of 40, 25. So that's that part. Let's go one more round with 5. A 40 has 8 fives, and 25 has 5 fives. With me so far? Very good. Now let's divide this 53 by 8. Okay, pay attention. This is where you have to pay attention. 53 divided by 8. 8, 6 are 48. 8, 6 are 48. After we take away 48 from 53, we'll have a remainder of 5. Stay with me. After we take away 48 from 53, we'll have a remainder of 5. And that 5 needs to be divided by 8. That 5 needs to be divided by 8. So what we're looking for is simply this. x is equal to 5 times 6 and 5, 8. 6 and 5, 8. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Okay, here we go. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 5 times 5 fifth, or rather 5 times 5 eight. 5 times 5 eight is going to give us 25th eight. 5 times 5 eight is going to give you 25th eight, which is same as, which is same as 24th eight and 1 eight. Still with me? 24th eight is 3, this is 30, so essentially x is equal to, x is equal to 33, here is the 30, here is the 3, 33 and 1 eight. There we go. That was number 94. That was number 94. <clears throat> Let's move on to 95. It goes, it goes much faster if you know what you're doing and if you're not explaining every single step as you're doing, if you're not speaking at the same time, it goes much faster. If, I, if you have to explain everything to somebody as you're doing it, it obviously slows you down. But it shouldn't take that long. 95 says that we had 15% more employees in December than in January. Apparently we had more people working for us, 15% more to be precise in December compared to what we, what we have now in January. We are further told that there, there, there were 460 employees in December. The question simply is how many how many do we have in January? That's all it is. How many do we have in January? Let's set it up. Don't make it complicated. Let's set it up a simple proportion problem. So here is our December, here is our January and we are told that we had 15% more employees in December. So let's make December equal to 115. For every 115 people that we had in December, we had 100% 100 people rather in January. That's the ratio. And that, that ratio has to be same as how many? We had three, 460 in December. 460 in December. We're looking for how many did we have in January. Let's solve for it, shall we? So X is going to be equal to Bring the x on the top, bring this over there. So we have 460 times 100, 460 times 100 over 115. And that's all it is. We just have to simplify it, that's all it is. Let's do, let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it together. Let's divide, let's divide top and bottom by 5 first. If you divide top and bottom by 5, 100 has 20 fives, 11 has 2 fives. After we take away 2 fives from 11, 2 fives are 10. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 15 and the 5 and becomes the 15. And 15 has 3 fives. Of course, 115 has 23 uh, fives because we just said 100 has 20 fives and there's 15 more. So there's 3 more fives. Oh, there we go. 23 and 46. Let's divide top and bottom by 23. 46 is going to cancel out and 0 has no 23s. So it's just 20 times 20. 20 times 20. Turns out 
that we had 400 employees in January. 400 employees in January. And that's all there is. And that's all there is. Let's continue. I'm just curious as to what it's going to work out to be. Fifteen. Yes, you see, in January, in January, we had fifteen percent fewer people. We had fifteen percent fewer. We had fifteen percent more people in December than what we had in January. Well, there you go. We had fifteen percent more people. We had fifteen percent more people in December than what we had in January. In January, we had four hundred. 10% of 400 is 40, another 5% would be 20, 40 plus 20 is 60, so we have 60 more people. Number 96. Number 96, and I believe that is the last one on the, on the page, there you go, that is the last one on the page. In number 26 we have days, we have the recorded hours, and we have viewed hours. Here are the days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So apparently we recorded some programs on our VCR from the television on these four days. We recorded four hours of programming. We reported no hours of programming on Wednesday, two hours on Thursday, and zero hours on Friday. And uh, how many hours of those recorded programs did we watch each day? This is what we recorded on every day. This is what we watched. We watched no hours, no hours on on Tuesday. We watched one to two hours on Wednesday. We watched no hours on Thursday, and we watched between three and five hours in on on Friday. The question simply is, what is the range for for hours hours not watched? hours not watch, which is what they're calling H, and they're looking for the range. They're looking for the range. So let's find out very quickly, shall we? You see here, we have six hours of recording. We, we record a total of six hours, four and two, six hours. And here, if you look at this end, we watched only four hours. One to two hours, three to five hours, I think I may have screwed this one up. 96. I think I may have made a mistake on this one. It is quite possible. I do that sometime. I can't believe it. I have to look it up right now. We'll do it in the next video. I, this is going to annoy me. Just give me one second. I'm going to very quickly look up in the back. 96. I don't know how I can make a stupid mistake like that. Answer is E. One to three hours. That's what I have here. One to three hours. Viewed. One to two hours. Three to five hours. Oh, we're looking for not viewed. Okay, we're looking for hours not viewed. I'm, I wasn't paying attention. We're looking for the hours not viewed. Okay, so let, let me pick it up next time. I'm, I'm not. I can't think right now. It's too late in the night. I'll pick it up from here in the next video. I don't know what's going on with my brain. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we will work on some. Tomorrow we'll work on some. I can't. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Tomorrow we'll work on some data sufficiency problems from what whatever it is that we left off yesterday. All right. If you wish to get hold of me, if you still wish to get hold of me, you can reach me at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.